Hey guys, it's me, 80 Summer before. Today, guys, we're going to discuss with you guys about players that could potentially leave Barcelona in the month of January. Now, these players are players that I think have a realistic chance. Of course, there'll be some players that you guys will probably mention in the comment section below, and which I forgot to mention. These are the five players that I think could potentially leave Barcelona. Now, keep in mind, two of which have already left. So, let me give you guys my thoughts about those two players, and, you know, we'll discuss about the other players. So, let's start with the first player that we have is Yusuf Demir. I just feel like for me, Yusuf Demir, I don't know. I, I just didn't really think he was that amazing and all. I'm not saying he's a bad player. Obviously, he isn't. I just didn't really feel like he was going to get ever get that much amount of minutes here just because of how much competition there is. You know, like as we have Abde competing for the winger position. Dembele, obviously, you know, you have Fati, um, Elias, um, Ferran Torres, you know, even Gavi and Nico Gonzalez, you know, you could also put them in the wing here, even Dest maybe as well. And I just feel like for me, um, there was just too much competition. And I just feel like for him in particular, his development, I just don't really think he can have a sustainable future here. And obviously, Barca didn't really want him just to sit on the bench and do absolutely nothing. So I think it was right for both parties to terminate their ways, you know, go their separate ways. And he goes back to Austria Wien. And obviously, I hope he could do well there back in that club. And maybe perhaps in a few years' time, if he really excels there, he can make that breakthrough move, sort of like what um, uh, Trincao did in the Portuguese league, I believe, for Braga. So maybe, um, you know, like I said, do something in that. I, I just think it was he was way too young. And imagine that he had scored that goal against Benfica. Imagine he'd actually scored that goal. Because not only would it have been great for his career, it would have been, a, it would have been great for us in the Champions League. Because what that goal we would have maybe have made it to the round of 16. So, it's interesting. So, like I said, for me, disappointing. I'm not too frustrated. I think ultimately this was the right decision. And apparently, if he had played one more match, we would have to pay his 10 million buyout release clause. So, it was best. It was great that we didn't have to do that. Because, like I said, if we're going to... It, it was great that we just got this ter uh, loan terminated. Because, like I said, if we're going to play one more match, we might as well have to pay it. And obviously, since we don't really have any interest for him, it's a waste of money. So... Yeah, so yeah, let's move on to the next player. So the next player we have here, it is obviously uh, Felipe Coutinho. Now, as I'm recording this video, guys, Felipe Coutinho just had a nice debut. He had a nice debut against Manchester United, and, and and he was really good. He was really good. He came off the bench, got a goal, got an assist. I mean, it's a dream debut for him. And um, for Coutinho, man, I just feel like for me, um, he had to leave. He had to leave. I mean, we, we, we've been crying out loud for a long time that Coutinho needs to leave this club. He needs to find a new club. And I just feel like for me, him at Barcelona just never really worked out. And I know he was quite decent for us for six months, you know. Um, but ever since the 18-19 season, just not been the same. He was consistently playing the left. We know that's not really his game. He's more of the um, number 10. And, you know, when you have Messi in your team, it's very difficult to really play very well alongside him. You know, we've seen how Griezmann's really struggled with him and how Coutinho did as well. And just for me, Coutinho just, just in general just doesn't really cut it here. And I just feel like for me, for for him to do very well, he needs to go to a team that is centered around him. At Barcelona, the main piece is Messi. I know this season Messi isn't here and everything, but even when he has played, he hasn't looked convincing. He hasn't looked convincing. And I just don't feel like we we, we don't really have someone to look up for. We're basically as a collective unit. And I think for continue to really excel, you have to make him as your focal piece. You have to make him the center of your attention. You have to make him your star player. And if he is your star player, then I think you could do very well. And which is why I think the Villa move is such a great move for him. Because with Steven Gerrard there at the helm, he could do very well there. And, you know, with um, Aston Villa having the aspirations of making a far, making it deep, uh, making it f far in the Premier League, you know, making it, trying to make the top seven, that kind of thing, you know, trying to get some European football, I think will be a great, great achievement for Coutinho. And, you know, like I said, I think with the debut we just saw from today, I think... Um, Hopefully, Villa purchase him. It's a $40 million buyout clause, and if they purchase him, it'll be great, greatly needed for us. And obviously, he had high salaries too. We now move on to the potential players that I could see leave Barcelona this month. Now, there are some other players you guys can mention. These are the three that I think have the most significant chance. Let's start with the big one, of course, which is Uzman Dembele. This is a player that is divided a lot of fans. A lot of fans like him. A lot of fans hate him. He's very, very controversially polarizing. And I think, in my opinion, of all the five players, 
this could be the most significant one that could happen because according to the news reports and according to everything, Dembele and his agent wants to get $40 million per year at Barcelona. Obviously, we know the club isn't really interested in giving that kind of salary just because of how expensive it is. So, like I said, that in itself is just a huge chunk of money. And obviously, we don't really have that kind of money just lying there. And let's be real. Dembele hasn't really put on the performances no, nor worthy of a $40 million per year. For me, a $40 million per year kind of player, that would be like the play, that would be like Holland and Mbappe. He is nowhere near those kind of players, at least in the goals and the stats, merch, the goals and assists kind of thing. And my thing with Dembele is this. You are in no position to request that kind of money. Because my here's what my belief is. You need to have you need to have you need to be here a while. You got to be a veteran and a legend, and you also have to earn it on the pitch. You can't just like you know say, oh, I'm gonna do this. You know, I have all the talent. We know the talent you have, but you have to prove it because there only there's only so much your talent can go with. If you don't have the mentality or the mindset to improve or be consistent, you cannot stay at this club. And I'm sorry to say, if Dembele, if you do not want to raise your, if you do not want to um. Uh, renew your contract, please leave the month of January. And according to many reports, Dembele doesn't want to leave in January. He wants to leave on a summer in a free, which would mean that we would get nothing. He would get, we would get nothing, and he would leave for absolutely nothing, which is absolutely disastrous. Like, let me put it this way, guys. Let me put it this way. If we let Dembele go on a free, that is going to be really bad for us because we spent $110 million, I believe, on this player. And we got nothing in return. And you got to think of the uh, investment we put onto him when he went was in the hospital, injured, and that kind of stuff. That's a lot of money sitting there wasted, you know. Now I happen to be one of those people that actually rate Dembele. I really like Dembele when he's fit. When Dembele is fit, he is such a very good player. The problem is though is that he's he's so injury prone that it's hard to even guarantee a full season with injuries. And my thing with Dembele is that he has to do better. He has to be better at his end product. That's also something I don't like about him is that. He has so much technique and flair and skill, but he's not failing to score. I mean, he's almost like a player like Vinicius Jr. Seeing how Vinicius Jr. has been this season, he is, he is consistently scoring goals. For me, Dembele and Vinicius are very similar. It's just that Vinicius, for me, his finishing has been superb this season. If Dembele could like play under Ancelotti, then I think Dembele could his finishing could be very lethal. And he wasn't obviously that injury prone. So for Dembele in particular, I really hope that if you don't renew his contract, please leave it a month of Jaren. Please leave it a month of Jaren. We need to get some kind of money for you. Because I don't want to I don't want you to leave for free. And it's interesting is that even though you're you know, there's a lot of contract speculation and everything, he still continued to be a first player under Xavi. Xavi's still c- c- counting on him, which I find very absurd, is that we're counting on a guy that's not gonna that's future is not even committed to Barcelona, you know? And so if he does leave, which I think he will leave, guys, if I'm being honest. I don't think he's going to stay. He will probably go to a Premier League team. He'll probably go to a Premier League team. And my best get is, like, Newcastle. Newcastle is probably the big one. We know they we know they got a lot of money recently. We know the takeover they had, and we know they just signed Kieran Trippier as their first official signing. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Dembele be their second signing. So for me, Dembele, man, I don't know, man. I don't know. This is the most big one, and I'm really hoping to God he stays. And better this very moment, I could see him leave. I could see him leave. And I think for him in this particular, maybe he should leave. Maybe he should. Comment down below if you guys have something on this one. Moving on to the next player we have. It is another player that I think has been very, very interesting. Very shocking as well. And that is Serginho Dest. Now, of course, as you guys know, I happen to live in the USA. My national team is the United States men's national team. And of course, I know people are going to come out here and say, oh, you're biased, you're biased, and all this thing. Yes, you could argue that I'm biased. And I think Sergio Dest could leave. Javi apparently doesn't trust Sergio Dest. Apparently, um, he does not want, have any plans for him. And apparently, um, Dest isn't happy with this. Apparently, him and his agent says he wants to stay at Barcelona and fight for that position. But if the situation continues to get worse, obviously, you'll have to leave. And my thing about this is that, yes, Dest hasn't been that great this season. I will, be the, I will admit that Dest hasn't been that great this season. But is he really worse than Mingueza? Because Mingueza, for me, has not been great this season. Mingueza has been one of the worst players this season. Okay? And you're seeing Mingueza not get the same treatment. And you know why? I'm going to say this right now. I know many people might not agree with me, but I'm going to say this right now. I think this might be some Catalan tax. I think this might be. Because why on the earth would Dest be in this transfer list? 
I can guarantee you right now, if Des was if Des was Catalan or from La Masia, he wouldn't be in the transfer list. Because if that's the case, if you're going to sell Des, you might as well sell Mingueza because Mingueza has been horrendous as a fullback. And so that's my thing is that Des for me, yes, his defensive work rate isn't very good, but he's, his attacking route rate is ridiculous. He's got a pretty good attacking rate. His technique is very good on the ball. And his ability on the ball and his attacking rate is incredible. And for me, someone put this up there, and I think it's a really interesting comparison. He is almost like a Trent Alexander-Arnold. You know, obviously, we know Trent is a lot better when it comes to crosses into the box, but you can compare and how the players are so similar. Their attacking output is insane. Their defensive output is very, very bad. And it's not as though Sergio Des hasn't had great defensive performances. I remember the game against PSG in the second leg of the Champions League. He was pretty good against Mbappe. Actually, that was um, Junior Ferro. He was good against Mbappe in the first leg. Do you remember the El Clasico? He was good. And remember, guys, Dest is very young. Dest is not very old. He's 20 to 21 years old. And I just feel like for me, even if we do replace him, who are we going to get that's like a great, great replacement? Because for me, the only really great replacement that we can get is Maserati. And this is a sh- long-term replacement, by the way. And there's no guarantee Miles Roy is going to leave for free for Ajax this summer. There's no guarantee of that. So, and remember, guys, Danny Alves is 38. Mingueza is still there. Roberto is still there. I don't think it's... I mean, if anything, I think Mingueza and Roberto should leave before Dest does. Because for me, that's just not fair. Because we have seen Roberto and Mingueza not be great as fullbacks. And they're not getting the same treatment. And I know there's Aspel Aquetza, who I do think is a great player. And I think he's a player that could really, really be a great player for Barcelona in the future. A great player right now. But here's the thing. He's very old. <laughs> you know, he's like 32 years old, I think. And I don't know about you guys, but I don't want I, I, I don't want us to sign veterans. I don't. We got to sign more youngsters. Or at the very least, we got to sign, um, you know, people that are in their prime. Aspel Aquetza is definitely not in his prime. And I do think he would be a great short-term replacement. I would like for him, you know, I think he could definitely do the job. But as I said, as far as the long-term replacement is concerned, if we get rid of Dest, who's going to be the right back? Because I don't know about you guys, but Alves ain't going to stay here for a long time. And I certainly do not want Minguez and Nora Roberts to be starters. I certainly don't want to. So it's going to be very interesting, you know, and I'm hoping to God that if Sergio does, does leave, we get a great replacement. So, because like I said, I do think that this is going to happen. I think Sergio Dest will likely stay in the January window just because of, um, just because we're going to still need him. And, you know, Masrori is not for free. But when it comes to summer, I could see us doing a swap deal. I could see us doing a swap deal for Masrori. And I, uh, Dest goes back to Ajax and we get Masrori. So, I don't know, man. I'm just not really sure how I feel about this. I particularly do not like this transfer. I am completely against it by all means. And um, and it's not me just being biased. Even if I wasn't from USA, I would still would I would still have wanted him to stay because, like I said, he's very young. He's got a lot of potential, and I just don't think it makes sense for us to get rid of him because, like I said, we're not going to get any great replacement for him. We're just not going to. And I just think that for Javi, he just doesn't trust Dest, and for some reason, and I don't even know why he doesn't trust. You know, and like I said, it might be something to do with the training sessions. It might be something like what the Kuman and Pooj. Remember how Kuman just despised Pooj and never gave Pooj the opportunity? It might just be the same kind of reason as that. You know, it just doesn't make sense in my opinion. It just doesn't make sense. And then finally, we have the final player that we have here who I think is really, really interesting we have to discuss, and that is Memphis Depay. Memphis Depay, for me, is a player that has definitely caused a lot of hatred in the Barcelona fan base. I've everyone everywhere I see in the Barcelona server, which I'm in the server, by the way, the Discord server, they will always call him Memphis Pen Pie. They've called him a penalty merchant. They've called him nicknames. They have made fun of him. And I'll be real with you guys. Depay for me, ever since August, he's not been the same. And I just don't really think Depay is just really coming up. And I know we're only halfway through the season. I know no people will say, come on, you got to be patient. You can't, you know, just sell them already. There's been rumors of him going to Juventus. And apparently what's going to happen is that there might be like a swap deal for him with Morata. So Morata could come to Barcelona and we could send him back to, we could send him to Juve. That has been some r- rumor suggestion, transfer reports. And I'll be honest with you guys, with the amount of attackers we have in the club, we have Fatih, Dembele, Torres, Abde, Ilias, Jutkala, Luke de Jong, Braithwaite as well. I don't know if Depay can get much minutes here. And I wouldn't be surprised to see us let go of Depay in the summer. Because keep in mind, guys, Depay has a two-year contract. And 
remember, guys, he will be going to his final season. So I think for us, if we want to get rid of him now or summer might be the best time to get rid of him because, like I said, we progressed. We can get a good amount of money for him. And I just don't really think Depay really suits his team. He's not really the guy that suits his team. And I just don't really think he could be our number nine. Because I feel like when Dest, uh, De, uh, no, sorry, Dest, Depay was signed, we, we were made to believe he was going to be our number nine. But he hasn't really been it. Feel I feel like for me, he's, we have seen a lot of times this season, he's been, excuse me, drifting out wide and being almost like a left winger, essentially, being more of a creator, facilitator. I even made a video about this on my channel, about Memphis Depay more in particular. And I just think that for me in particular, what I would do is this. I would give Dest, <laughs> what do you keep saying Dest? I would give Depay the remainder of the season. And if he still continues to not perform, I would consider selling him. I would consider I would consider selling him because like I said before, for me, I just don't really think Depay can really cut it for this team. He's in his prime, by the way. So, you know, and I just think for us, I just don't really think he suits this team. You know, and let's be real, guys. We all know why he came to Barcelona. It was because of that man, Ron Koeman. If Koeman wasn't the manager, I don't think he would come to Barcelona. He would have came to Barcelona. I think Koeman just in particular had a lot of influence over him. And we know that Koeman is no longer the coach here, and that is Xavi. So, like I said, those are some players that I think could potentially leave Barcelona in the month of January. Now, two of which have already confirmed. Could there be a third player? Or could all of the players leave? Or could none of them leave? I want you guys to comment below which you guys think will leave in the month of January. And try to keep things objective, by the way, and not try to keep things biased. So if I had to make a guess of these three players, I would probably say the most likely is probably Dembele. I think he is the most likely of the three. And I think Depay and Dest will stay until the summer. And maybe... We'll sell him in the summer, maybe. Okay. Now, could any of none of the three sell be sold? Perhaps I wouldn't be surprised. I like I said, I think it's either Dembele or no one's gonna be sold. I think it's gonna be either of the two situations. We'll see what happens. So you know, and um, that's pretty much about it. So if you guys did enjoy, you guys make sure you guys comment and subscribe. Check out my description below, my Twitter, Discord, and my email, my Twitch. And I'll see you guys later. Peace out.